What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV, alright? Alright, so before I get into this video, I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers for his contribution. I want to give a shout out to Elijah for his contribution to the channel. Alright, Elijah's a long time uh, supporter of this channel, going back many years, uh, pound for pound. Uh, he's probably the most frequent contributor to this channel over the past few years. Really appreciate him, real avid basketball fan. You know what I'm saying? He's a real uh, advocate for change in this country, for uh, the betterment of his people. Um, so shout out to Elijah for his contribution. And I want to thank everybody that supports this channel on uh, YouTube. And I want to give a shout out to everybody that supports me on the Patreon. And if you're able to, please go to the Patreon. It's only uh, $2 per month on the Patreon. I want to thank all the people that support me uh, over there, too. All right, so... Um, look, this was a very good series. I should have just did a video talking about the game, too, but I'll just do this autopsy report video. I just, that was a really good series, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it was the best series of the first round uh, between the Denver Nuggets, Denver Nuggets and the Utah Jazz. Uh, individually, it was a great battle between uh, Donovan Mitchell and... Uh, the Denver Nuggets, uh, sensational guard Jamal Murray. Uh, in, in many ways, it kind of reminded me of that battle between uh, superstars at the time, Vince Carter and Allen Iverson. Um, you know, so in fact, they in that series, I believe that was the last time you had three separate 50 point games in the series two by Iverson, one by Vince Carter. Uh, in this series, that record uh, was extended, broken. Both players had 50-point games. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had a 57 and a 50-point game, and uh, Jamal Murray had two separate 50-point games. Uh, so this was a very exciting series. Um, Utah had the advantage. At one point, Utah held a commanding three games to one lead, um, and Utah could have closed this out. Um, but Denver, you know what I'm saying, was a team that had certain advantages. Uh, you know, when you have, <coughs> in my opinion, with Denver, when you have a player like Jokic, who is probably a top two center in the league, uh, you could argue he might be perhaps the most quote-unquote skilled center in the, in, in the NBA uh, you know, and, and you're a little bit deeper, in my opinion, especially early on in the season because uh, early on in the series, excuse me, because Utah did not have Mike Conley. Um, you know, that li led to, you know, certain advantages that Denver would have, and Denver was able to uh, come back and, you know, make a real series of this. And it went down to a game seven, and ultimately, you know, Game seven did not prove to uh, be a flunk or a dud. Um, and the seventh game, you know, the officials pretty much let the players play. Um, it was a slower paced game than we'll be accustomed to in this playoffs. And I believe it was the lowest scoring game in uh, the playoffs. Uh, the final score was 80 to 78. Uh, Donovan Mitchell averaged 36 points per game overall in this series. Uh, in the seventh game, both teams pretty much did their best to uh, refuse to let either Mitchell or Murray, you know, dominate the game as they had been throughout the series. Um, I believe Mitchell still ended up with 30, I think. Um, Jamal Murray did not shoot well in game seven, but he did hit a big bucket. Uh, down the stretch for the Utah, um, excuse me, for the Denver Nuggets. Um, it came down to the wire. Um, Donovan Mitchell had the ball. Uh, you know, um, I think he was trying to do something, you know, <clears throat> but I kind of felt like he was going to turn the ball over. He was in a lot of traffic. Uh, there was a lot of defense around him. He did end up turning the ball over. But Denver missed the ball in the ensuing, in their ensuing possession. Utah got it back. A lot of people think that in that situation, 
you know, instead of Mike Conley throwing up a desperation shot. It, was, it really was a good shot, actually. It wasn't real desperation. Almost went in. But many people felt like Donovan Mitchell should have tried to um, shoot it. But, you know, shit happens. So, Denver advances. Uh, Utah has been eliminated. But Utah, all in all, um, they probably feel disappointed, but at the same time, you know, you, you can't be too upset if you're Utah, especially when you consider uh, the fact they weren't going up against, I guess what you would call a, you know, mediocre opponent. Um, Denver is a team that, you know, is capable of being, you know, in the Western Conference Finals, some people, you know, think in some years that they could actually be a, 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 West, a Western Conference a representative in the Finals. I don't know about that, but so it's not like they're playing up against a terrible team. Um, Donovan Mitchell really atoned himself for last year's dud against the Houston Rockets. Uh, he only shot 32 percent from the floor in that series. Uh, if you remember correctly, uh, several months ago, it looked like this team was possibly going to be broken up. Uh, there was trade rumors involving Rudy Gobert after, you know, his, you know what I'm saying, his his sort of flippant attitude and display he put on as far as in the press conference, which led to, you know, apparently him contracting the virus or he didn't know he had the virus. And, um, you know, there was, Rumors that after Donovan Mitchell himself tested positive, rumors that these two were not getting along very well. Um, apparently, you know, the team was going to be broken up. Their relationship was described as, you know, um, not resolvable, unresolvable. So, you know, the fact that apparently they patched that up together, I mean, patched that up, um, apparently, and, you know, they played very well as a team. Um, you can make the argument if they had Michael Conley, maybe they would have, you know, won the series if they had him from the get-go. I mean, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but this is like a, I mean, normally in a, in, a, in a situation where a team blows a 3-1 lead, you have to be... Like, wow, man, they, you know, it's very, very disappointing. But considering how they played last year, it's it's still not, like, you know, like, you get the feeling like they overperformed, you know. Um, so at the very end, uh, I mean, yeah, it's disappointing that they blew this lead. They could have came back. Uh, that game could have went either way. Um so when you look at the circumstances, it's it's not really that devastating. You know what I'm saying? Um, how can I explain this? Like, it's not the same situation, um, but it, it's sort of like when the Lakers had that three-one lead when Kobe was in, back in 2006, when the Lakers had that three-one lead against Phoenix, like, and they you know and it, Phoenix came back to win the series. Yeah, the Lakers blew a 3-1 lead, but the Lakers really shouldn't have been up 3-1 anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was, no one was expecting the Lakers to win that series. Now, I'm not saying that Utah is in the same position as the Lakers team because that team really overperformed. But, you know, I, if you had asked me three months ago or four months ago who would win the series between Denver and Utah, I would have told you Denver in five. So you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's not like they really, really shit themselves, you know. This this was an impressive playoff performance, especially by Donovan Mitchell. Um, yeah, he turned the ball over, but, you know, all in all, this was a, a total redemption on his part. Um, he reestablished himself as one of the best uh, point guards in the NBA. Um, well, best guards, excuse me, not point guards. 
excuse me, he, he, he established himself as one of the best guards in the NBA. Sometimes, for some reason, I keep forgetting, you know, that he's really a shooting guard, not, not a point guard. But um, <clears throat> he established, reestablished himself as one of the best guards in the NBA. Um, you know, down the line, can this team really, you know, can this team become, you know, a team that you expect to go a little further, um, like their, you know, counterparts from 20 plus years ago? Stockton Malone, well, I mean, no. Um, I mean, to me, Utah just seems like a type of team that's going to be, you know, everybody's not going to win a championship. Utah, to me, is the type of team that, you know, a, a great season is them going deep in the second round. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. that's to me like, to me, like right now, that's like the best they can do right now. Um, uh, like if you go down the line, look to the future, you know, maybe they could go further as LeBron, the late, the LeBron ages out, um, you know, maybe they go to state team starts to get a little older, maybe a piece of here go away, uh, get straight to another team. Um, as the NBA shifts in the next couple of years, maybe Utah, they add a couple of pieces. Donovan gets more playoff experience, gets a little even better. Um, you know, maybe they, they could be one of the better teams in the NBA. Um, one thing that does hurt them right now a little bit is, honestly, even though Donovan plays like he's a big guy, he is still only six foot one, um, you know, and it does help when you have in this era a big that has a skill set more in tune with today's basketball. So you know, other than that, though, um, Utah's future is very bright. But tell me what you guys think.